It's like these these undulating plants. Swamp Futea. Hello everyone, the Ranks is here and welcome back to No Man's Sky, episode 95, where we are departing the Atlas Terminal, having just learned how to make, uh, I can't even remember the name of it, uh, no, Photic Jade is what we have, we learned how to make a state phaser, although it requires 100 cadmium, which we have on our freighter, we do not have any on us. And there were some other things I wanted to do in this system. Ugh, like check out this icy ocean planet, or were we just gonna jump to the next uh, to the next Atlas terminal? Oh, I'm having a hard time remembering. Tempered planet, ancient bones. So this is like a teal planet. There's so many neat planets with oceans. This is like a ocean-laden system here. And then of course, didn't we land on one of these planets? I thought we had, but perhaps we didn't. Maybe we had just gotten here. I'm thinking of the other system. So many planet options. Ah, yes, the desert planet with the teal oceans. See? I knew it would come back to me. Well, yeah, no, that's that's what we're going to do. So we're going to check this out. Because I do think we're going to set up a base here on this desert planet. Because this is kind of neat. The idea of a desert planet with oceans is somewhat appealing. Although a little odd, but I can understand it. If, uh, if it's so hot... Ooh. That's an odd effect there on the water. If it's so hot that the water moisture is absorbed and just never really gets cool enough to precipitate, or at least not to precipitate in any real capacity, could just be that it's a hot planet. Sort of a barren looking desert though not really not really the cactus forest that was the last one but that's okay all we really need is a nice pyrite deposit and it would be really killer if we could find one close to the coast it's got like little savanna scrubland trees oh this is a manufacturing facility so we are 100 percent going to swing in here and try to get ourselves a blueprint I believe I stepped right over the parched sands. Typical. Okay. So it is just lack of rainfall. There's a pyrite deposit. But we're not here for that deposit necessarily. More this factory. And I believe we still need a picture of a manufacturing facility. So hopefully this one will fit the bill. There it goes. Quest successful. That's good. Oh, we do have some creatures here. Uh, none of them appear hostile, so I think we'll just go ahead and scan them. A couple different varieties. That's a mineral. That's not a creature. You. You're an odd-looking creature. Serepto... Seriptopupus? No, no, no. This, this larger creature here. Don't run away. Don't run away. Hold on. Maybe I can feed you and you'll be my friend. Oh, I don't have cobalt. Oh, no! No, don't disappear. Just... Hold on. Ah, there we go. And then more flying creatures. Wow. I like these, these long snake-like bird creatures. These are kind of neat. And there's still another unidentified creature over here. I 
through the cactus, you say? Bicycle gliss. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stop trying that. Have we got all the red dots nearby? Have we? I dare say we have. Ooh, buried technology. Not that far away. I'm I'm coming around to this planet. Okay, it's it's definitely got a little bit of character. I like that it has green, these little trees. I mean, this makes sense to me, being that it does have oceans, so there is going to be some rainfall, just maybe not enough. The terrain seems uneven. It's definitely got these, these standing type of uh, plateaus and the floating rocks, obviously. There are floating rocks. Okay, let's get inside this manufacturing facility. Hopefully we know enough of the Viking words to make this happen. Let's go ahead and recharge our life support. Oh, we don't have the dioxide. Oh, well. I do remember in the comments it was said that dioxide is a more efficient way to charge the O2 tanks. So thank you, the madman, for that. Uh, we're going to try it if we only had dioxide, but we don't have dioxide on us. But I do read the comments, and I do pay attention, and I try very hard to give credit where it's due. There are a lot of tips in the comments. Um, I guess we'll use this moment just to say, you know, West Coast Scott, thank you very much. I mean, it's it's going to be impossible to try to give everybody credit where it's due, but I'm going to try whenever possible. But if you have yet to be recognized for your many contributions in the comments, please do not take it personal. It's a lot to keep track of, but I do pay attention and I do appreciate it very much so. That being said, let's see if we know enough of the Viking language to make this worth our while, or if we're just going to waste our time. Interloper visual detection. The alarm has locked the terminal. Security scanners appear and slowly turn towards me. A message displays itself letter by letter on the terminal. So with visual detection, I'm thinking we cut the camera feed and that should do it. The security alert does not trace me. The facility becomes operational, and we learn how to make Atlas Pass version 2. Yes! Which also takes cadmium. So we have even more of a reason to hop on our freighter and get some cadmium at this point. Viking word for glorious. That was very nice. We absolutely need to do more of these manufacturing facilities. I wish the Exocraft signal booster could track them. Well, that would make my life so much easier, but alas, they do not. So I believe our only way to identify manufacturing facilities is through navigational data. Skittish. Oh, look at that. It's like a horned rhino or hippo stegosaurus. Oh, that's... Yeah. The creatures. Oh, the creatures. Oh, I looked right at you. I looked right at this plant and switched to my mining laser and was like, Oh, I better kill that before I go walking through it. And again. All right, creatures, do your thing. We're just going to dig a little trench. There we go. Technology modules. We are closing in on the end of the blueprints that we can obtain from this buried technology, so I'm anxious to keep pressing that button, and then we just won't have to worry about it for a time. As night falls, it's going to get cold, I imagine. I'm feeling this planet, though. This is neat. We've got a couple different planets uh, in the vista. Oceans to explore. For I do want oceans. Question is, do I want to set up a base near the ocean? Or do I want to go inland? I, I know that we need an underwater base at some point, but the underwater base, for me, seems like it's going to be mostly for, I don't want to say vanity purposes, but mostly cosmetics and, like, fun. It doesn't seem like there's enough valuable resources under the ocean that you need long-term, but perhaps that will change in a future update. 
at which point I'll wish that I had one. So I know I want to make one. But without knowing what the benefit of having one down there would be, it's difficult to know where the ideal place to set it up is other than just somewhere deep in the water that's for fun and has no practical application. All right. Let's, uh, let's actually take back off. And let's gain a little bit of altitude so we can hopefully kind of look down and get an idea for where the ocean is. Okay, so the ocean absolutely extends out in this direction. Maybe we need like an island base, like a, a tropical, not tropical, but like desert island base. They've got a lot of these awkward floating rocks, and... Now, the ocean doesn't appear to be that deep, though. It could take us a little bit of time to find a pyrite deposit, though. And that's really what we need. Let's see, if I run a scan, there's likely... Oh, that does reveal... Oh, did you see that? The scanner actually reveals kind of the topography under the water, if only for a brief second, giving you an idea of its depth. And it's actually not that deep. Okay, so let's cut over, I'm thinking, to the middle of the ocean. I mean, it's sort of a... The way it procedurally generates, the depth, the deep area could be sort of anywhere. But it does make sense that the further from land you go the more likely you're going to find deep water. So, we really, we just need to try to find a deep spot of the ocean. And perhaps this island will be able to give us what we need. I'm hoping, if we can just find a pyrite deposit, see, but I don't think the sand is going to be mineable. I suppose this is where the water is going to be, yeah, the deepest. There's some, some pretty deep sections here, although we do have some of these larger islands. Now, how visible would pyrite deposits be? And do I want to settle up out here in the ocean? All very interesting things to consider. These low elevation sandy islands I don't think you're going to have any deposits on them because I, I don't know if you can terrain, use the terrain manipulator to eat through this. Maybe you can. It's just all sandy. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. There is a deposit here. Or at least there's one showing up on the scan. Okay, well, we're going to have to just land and see what this is. Although this island appears to be just devoid of everything. Oh, except lots of creatures on it. Okay, interesting. That seems like an aggressive movement. Bold and eats putrefied meat. So, absolutely a predator. No cacti or trees or anything like that. Pyrite deposit, it says. I don't... Oh, there is pyrite here! Oh! I looked right at you and I knew you were a predator. Some giant jackalope turtle thing. And deep water. Oh, I've got to jump in the water and see what this is. Oh, this is weird. It's like these, these undulating plants. Swamp Futea. Sort of a neat little, neat little ocean. It doesn't appear too deep. It's definitely moderate depth. 
Lots of pearl locations nearby. As long as no large aquatic predators are going to come after me, which I haven't seen many of lately. Actually, I haven't seen really any at all, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Helps me relax. Although I'm sure they exist. So we're giving up... We're giving up a view on land and the ability to exocraft anywhere nearby for the benefit of having a base right here on the water next to the pyrite. Which means we could do our underwater base here and still have a place above land to harvest pyrite and grow our cactus. And we can have our own cactus farm. Yes. This is... This is what I desire. This is it. This is it. We're going to do this. Okay. So, first things first. Let's get ourselves an Exocraft Summoning Station. Like, right here. That's fine. So, let's summon... The Nautilon. And just take it... Take it down here, and let's just... Let's just assess... Assess the scanning capabilities. Is there anything even within scan range? Okay, there is no downed starship within scanned range. That's sort of sad, knowing how far they scan and how far out in the ocean we are. So, not many downed starships on this planet. We could try maybe underwater ruins? Yeah, let's, let's see that one. That's the other one I'm kind of curious about. Submerged ruins. None of those either. So this could be the blandest uh, ocean that we're going to run into. I mean, we can always use it as a place to grab cytophosphate and salt. Perhaps it's just that the ocean isn't deep enough. And I, I used my scanner for no good reason. Uh, we'll have to use the signal booster here in a moment. Ooh, vents on the ceiling. Careful of that. It's a neat little, little desert planet. It really is. I don't know if it's going to be worth setting up an underwater base here, though. Simply because of the lack of anything interesting on the scans. And we could look for a better island with a pyrite deposit on it. Oh, look. It's an abyssal horror. You don't, uh, you don't really hurt the sub, do you? Doesn't even care about the sub. Should we try sunken buildings? Okay, there are sunken buildings nearby. So it's not a total waste. It's possible we might be able to find submerged starships if we went further out. Let's do the last scan here for downed freighters. Okay, and there are, there are sunken freighters detected. Okay, so the, the, the ocean is deep enough for certain things to spawn. Maybe not all of them as nearby as we would like, but what's happening? Everything was shaking. That was very unusual. I don't want that thing on my screen to keep here. Just put it to a different... get any more of these land creatures. That's okay. Well, there are a lot of land creatures considering there's no cacti here, but we'll we'll plant our own. We will. Let's see. The pyrite deposit is over there, right? Right. There it is. 
so we need the base to be somewhat close to that location. So let's head back over there. We could sort of build our underwater base, like, underneath the island. That could be pretty neat. Let's see, there's the pyrite deposit. So we want... See, I've never done this. I don't know. Do I have to put the computer... Do I have to put the computer on dry land? Let's let's see how this goes. So if I say, hey, I want to build a base computer, I can. I can just build it down here on the bottom of the ocean. Ooh, ooh, okay, so it doesn't have to be... doesn't have to be up above land. Then let's just build it right here. Oh, this is fun. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would like to claim this base. Right here on this island in the middle of the ocean. This little desert island. I like it. Base claimed. Let's go ahead and rename to Sandy Depths. I might think of something more. Did that not? It never registers the name changed. Okay, Sandy Depths. I might think of something more, more witty later, but for now I just want to get building. Okay, so if we go to... let's see... Oh, those must be ships flying overhead. Large rooms, right? No, it's not any of these. Perhaps it's... aquatic construction, a deep water chamber. I know. I know. I see. I see. Starting to starting to inhale a little bit of that recycled oxygen. It's okay. Uh, we do want to set up our auto miners here on this pyrite, but it's not super important to do that just yet. Hot sandstorm. We still have the planets on the horizon. I do I do like this. Just doing all the ferrite. We have the magnetized ferrite. I suppose it's just time to start processing it. One mordite. We can get rid of some of this into its Location. We we do need to sell some of this stuff. That's that's okay. We can actually we can take these engine modules here. Yeah, let's do that since we already have a summoning station. We don't have much of a need uh, for the Pilgrim Exocraft, but we can clear these things out of our inventory, and so I think we should. So let us dismantle this. And then we shall install flawless propulsion next to the engine. Right? That's top speed and fuel efficiency. Seems sort of fun. Let's do it again. I think it's outlining that. I think that's a color. Fuel efficiency, top speed. Let's just take it for a spin. Let's just see. Ah, uh, it, it, it feels a little faster. Not tremendously so, but... Okay, that, that's, that's, that's fun. I'll give that to you. That's, that's fun. We'll, we'll have to try it out. I mean, 
I don't know. It doesn't seem that much faster. Top speed, 14%. So we're looking at 30 or 28% extra top speed. I mean, you know, it's it's not going to be a game changer. It's not going to change our, our worldview or anything. Okay, let's put down... Uh, if we need the, the metal, we're just going to have to put down our portable refiner. Go ahead and fill this up with some carbon and then start processing the magnetized ferrite into what we need, which is pure ferrite. Slow grazer. I think if we can put down the pyrite, we should. Now, this will be an interesting test as well. Oh no. This is a resource deposit, is it not? It's it's going to fight with me on this one, isn't it? Nothing's ever that easy, is it? Okay, so let's try a few things and then if it's not going to work, we're just going to have to pull our base up and try somewhere else. Darn it, I was kind of feeling this place. Okay, so first things first, let's try to... Okay, so we are gaining pyrite as we mine it up. So we're not crazy. There is indeed pyrite here, although the scanner pretty much confirmed that. You. You smash my hopes and dreams. Okay. No, that's fine. There's no need to get upset about it. Thanks. That's, that's not how this works. Okay. Um. Give me that back. And then... Let's, um, delete the base, please. It was a nice thought. No, but as I feared, and uh, I sort of kind of already hinted at it, that uh, that sandy-type terrain was not going to be beneficial. It was still going to let us harvest the pyrite, but not put an auto miner on it, which that's kind of the whole wait. What the? Did it rip up my portable refiner? Oh, so now I need a base salvage module to get my portable refiner back. Curse you. B-class fighter. B class explorer, where are they headed? Huh. I'm sure all we need is an island that doesn't have so much sand on it. And to be fair, I see an island with a tree over here. So as long as there's some pyrite on this island, we're fine, right? Of course, there is none. So we must continue traveling. That island was not meant for us. We could just go to the coast. Again, with this sandy surface... What are the odds to get a pyrite deposit that we need? I do enjoy these purple skies. Yeah, little, little tiny island. No pyrite to be had there. So 
Slow down, slow down. Look at this. Surely there's some pyrite here. Come on. Just run another quick scan. There's an alien artifact on it. Okay, fair enough. There's some islands over here. We're just going to island hop for a little bit, everyone. Looking for that perfect dream getaway vacation island. Nothing there. This one appears to be a good size. Lots of trees and resources. Cacti on it. These scans should reveal resources similar to the other island, where they outline them in the in the golden mesh, so to speak. I find it hard to believe that a lot of these islands don't have a single deposit of anything, not even just not pyrite, but not anything. I do like how they're all flat, though. I think that's, that's sort of a quirky little characteristic. We might have to just go back to the mainland and give up on this pipe dream of owning an island out here in the middle of the ocean that gives us everything we need. Facilitating the best of an underwater base and an above land base. Or above, above sea level, above land. Huh, you know, that gives me a thought. Hold on a second. I know we don't need navigation data from these, but... If I'm not mistaken, can't we use navigation data to locate resource deposits? Surely this will tell us if there's any in range, right? I feel like that used to be a thing. It is not. Okay, I think we wasted a navigation date, but I'm not too concerned about it. You used to be able to use the signal booster to scan for resources. Wait. Magnetized ferrite. How did that not show up on our initial scan? Okay, so the gist that I'm getting is you cannot take it for granted that there are no resources if you don't see it pop up because maybe it's not rendering because according to this, there is magnetized ferrite over there and I don't remember seeing any kind of a mesh pattern formulate as I scanned this island. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to travel over to this deposit and make sure that it is visible as we expect it should be from the surface. Oh my goodness. Don't we have quests to kill creatures because this is ridiculous. So much noise. Okay, wh where was I? I was a little distracted. Magnetized ferrite. Yeah, it says magnetized ferrite. However, comma. Nothing of the sort. Wait, did this say submerged relic? And now it's gone. There is no magnetized ferrite here at... Well, hold on.
Absolutely not. And somehow it caused this weird, weird effect. It must be something with how these islands have generated. They're so, they're so flat. All right, let's make some more uh, projectile ammunition, please. And then we're going to go ahead and use this plasma. Like that. It's not just for the quests. Um, we also need more dite as well. But it's mostly for the quests. I'm sorry, but there's enough biodiversity on this island, they're going to be fine. Except you. That's the only one of you I've seen. But that's it's okay. I'm just going to keep knocking out these quests. So the system lies to us, apparently, about resources being on islands, when in fact there are none. So that leads me to believe that the the golden square mesh designs are still the biggest indicator as to whether or not resources exist on a planet. We might be looking at a full-blown relocation to the coast step away from this this deep ocean dream that we have so look at this island I mean this island is cool but it's still it's got like it's got this sandy surface and not like the desert should normally have a sandy surface it has this well what is that that's just a bunch of clams game seems to be really struggling with this section as well, which is a little odd. But it's got this sandy surface that almost looks like what you get when you dig deep enough and you can't dig anymore, which is why I think we're getting these odd effects. Let's, let's leave this for just a moment. Okay. Now, if we just... Let's, let's go over to where the sun is shining. So we're, we're near the coast. The problem is I don't think the ocean's going to be very deep here. But this is a separate ocean, and some of these islands appear to be very large. I'm looking at the time. We're running a little long. I really wanted to get this island squared away before I wrapped things up, though. Let's let these land masses render here and see where we're at. Hmm. At least these aren't super flat. Or some of them aren't. Some of them are. Oh, interesting. Magnetized ferrite. Oh, and this one absolutely looks like magnetized ferrite. Okay, so it is possible, although we are close to the coast. It has renewed my hope. hope for pyrite on a tropical desert island. Well, not really tropical. I mean, it's hot like a tropical desert island, but not a lot of jungle. Alright, so I guess we'll check the depth here. Real quick, just to, just to figure things out. I don't think... 
yeah, this is this is all fairly shallow in here. Ooh, the abyssal horrors are even in the shallows on this planet. Hold up, that's okay. All right, that's got me a little concerned. I think we're gonna double down on our efforts, though. We're just gonna look for a larger island, maybe one that's not so flat, has a little bit of terrain, uh, procedural terrain generated on it, because it's obvious this doesn't have, you can tell it's sandy, but it's not the same sort of sandy. It doesn't look like you know, the bottom of the ocean sandy. Hmm. These plants. Always trying to get me in their clutches. There's a Kino cactus growing on the side of that island. How odd. Now I don't see any resource markers except pyrite. Hush my mouth. There's copper, there's... Oh, I was just about to sign off. Hold on, because this could be precisely what I'm looking for here. Um, oh, maybe not. Are you kidding? That doesn't look like... Uh, right on the edge, too. Right on the edge. And it's all shallow in here. It's incredibly shallow. I don't think that's a legitimate deposit, but let's go ahead and land so we can make sure everything has a chance to render. Now, before we build a base computer, you can still build three auto miners. So the question is going to be, do they recognize it's a deposit? Like, barely. So you're not going to get more than one or two auto miners on this deposit, if that. Yeah, not not what we're looking for. Okay, well, that's where we're going to wrap up No Man's Sky episode 95. We're still going to stay on this planet for a little bit, although we're mostly just in exploration mode at this time, looking for the right place to settle up on a base. I don't know how much more time I'm going to dedicate on camera to this, because I don't feel like we're making enough progress for my taste. So what I'm thinking is... I may just fly around this ocean and look for a spot uh, off camera. I don't know if that's the way to go. Or we could just go back to the coast and settle up on the coast. But I like the idea of having an island, even if it's close to the coast, but not the coast. Either way, we'll sort that out in the next episode. I do hope you've had a good time watching, because as always, I've had a good time playing. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, do come back next time and see what we decide for this base. But remember that until next time, take care.